In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and techniques to help you edit vertical format videos using Wondershare Filmora. There's no doubt that the vertical video platforms have exploded over the last couple of years and are all in huge competition to try and dominate the market. So if you create content for TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, or any other vertical format platform, then this video is for you. Let's dive right in. If there's anything here that helps you, then give that like button a little tickle and maybe subscribe for more. So most people who are creating on these platforms will use apps on their phones to edit videos together. But I've got to be honest, most of them are so fiddly that they take 10 times longer to do anything, which is why I prefer to use Wondershare Filmora on my laptop. It's simple to learn, it's fast and it's got tons of great features. Now when you launch Filmora, you're going to get the option to open an existing project or create a new one. Now just above in this aspect ratio drop down box, you'll see that it defaults to 16x9 widescreen. We actually want to change that to 9x16 portrait. Once selected, we're going to click on new project. Now, if you've never used any video editing software before, this can look a little bit daunting and overwhelming. Well, I don't want you to worry about that at all. I've actually got another video where I go into detail and I break it down step by step exactly how a beginner can get started with Wondershare Filmora. So at the end of this video, and in the description too, I'm going to leave a link to that video. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to import the videos that I've took on my phone. Now these are just sample ones just for a bit of demonstration. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag them into this media folder. The other way that you could do that is by clicking on import and import media files and then just browse to whatever files that you've done. Now we want to add our videos into the timeline. I'm going to do that by clicking on the first video and I can either click on that plus symbol or again, I can click and drag it into the timeline. If you get this message, it's basically telling me that the format that I've took the video in is different to the project. Now I want to keep the project settings because I want that 9 by 16 ratio that we talked about earlier. Now I'm just going to turn the volume down on this clip as well so you don't hear me speaking for a second. Now you might notice in the preview window, if I just click on this video, do you see how it's got these little black bars at the side? Now that's because when I've took this video on my phone, I've not had the settings correct. So I've not actually took the video in 9 by 16. I've took it in a slightly different ratio. I'll show you how to fix that. First of all, you can either manually click on the corners and drag and resize your video. And if I keep dragging that up, you'll see, see how you get that dotted line there now? That means that I've gone beyond the edge of the video. So I can drag that in and I can repeat that on the other side. The other option I've got is to click on the video here and then click on this crop button. At the bottom it says ratio. Now I want to change that to 9 by 16 and you'll notice it automatically crops the video. So if I just press OK, you can now see that the video here fills the screen and he's set to 9 by 16. So we'll just repeat that on the other videos that we import if they don't quite match. Now I'll very quickly show you how to cut parts of your video out. Again, it's in that other video, so if you want to see all of the different tips and techniques that you can use, it's in there. But I'll quickly show you. This red line basically marks that point in your video. Now I know that the start of this video is just dead space, it's just me not talking. And when you're creating these quick, fast videos, that doesn't really work very well because they've got to keep people's attention. So I'm just going to press these scissors and what that'll do is that'll cut that clip at that exact point. And if I move that red line out of the way, you'll notice now my clip has been split into two different clips. So I'm just going to highlight the first one and I'm going to press the delete button. That's now shortened my clip. So that's how you do basic cutting and trimming. So import a video into Filmora yourself and give that a little bit of a practice. Now if you're using multiple video clips, you would just do exactly the same process. You would click, drag it into your timeline and join it onto the end of the last one. Now what I want to do is just preview the video. So the video will actually start from wherever this red line is. So I'm just gonna put the red line there. And when I press play, you'll see what happens when it goes from one clip to the next clip. Now at the moment, it's quite a sudden jump. See how it just cuts straight away to the next clip. And that's fine, that might be how you prefer it. If you want it to be a bit of a smoother transition, then at the top here, you've got this transitions button. So let's click on that. Now this gives us lots of different transition types where basically the transition is when you go from one clip to another and how it does it. 
So you can either do fast sweeping moments, you can do spins, you can do fish eyes, you can do rolls. There's tons of different ways you can do it. You can even do these jazzy kind of colourful ones. I'm quite a basic guy and I quite like quite basic transitions as well. So one of my favourites is this fade transition. Now if I click on that fade transition, hold the mouse button down and drag it down, you'll see this little black box has appeared. Now you can put that at the end or the start of each clip or you can put it in the middle where it overlaps. What that's going to do is that that clip is going to fade into the next clip. Now if we want it to be a slower fade, we can literally just click on the edge of it and see how if we drag the mouse, that's that box is increasing in size. So that's basically changing the duration of the fade. And we just let go when we're happy. So I'm going to press play again. And I want you to watch in this preview what happens now that we've added that fade. Did you see how it faded to black and then faded back out again? And as you can see in this transitions feature at the top, these numbers in brackets are how many different transitions there are. There are absolutely hundreds of them. So find the ones that work best for you and that you like with your content. Now sometimes the footage that we want to put into these videos isn't in vertical format, it's actually in landscape. And I'm going to show you this one as an example. So I'm actually just going to click and drag this one into our video. Now you'll see it doesn't look particularly good because it's a landscape video and a vertical format. So you've got all of this black space at the top and the bottom. Now there are a few things that we can do. Again, we can increase the size by clicking on these corners, these arrows in the corner and dragging it. That might work for part of it, but it's a landscape video. So if I keep expanding that and making it bigger, you're only going to see half of my face, which might be an improvement. But I'm just going to show you a quick effect that we can add as well that just makes it look a little bit better. If we go into effects, and then where this search bar is here, I'm just going to type in blur. Now there's tons of different blur types. The one I want to use is this basic blur. And just like everything else, you can either click on the plus sign or you can drag and drop it. Now I'm just going to drag it above the video that we've just added. So it's above my landscape video. Now I want this blur effect to last a little bit longer. So I'm going to go to the edge of it. And when the cursor changes to them two arrows, I'm going to click and just drag it. Now what you should notice is in the video above now, it's actually creating a blurred background instead of them black bars. And it's taking the colours from my video as well. So if I actually just press play on this now, I'm not sure what I'm actually doing on this video. It's not exactly uh, it's not exactly interesting, but I'm presuming I'm getting ready to actually record on here. But you can see that the colours are changing. It looks a little bit better. There you go. There's some hands for you as well. Let's stop that there. Like I say, that's just an option if you have to use landscape footage and you can't fill the screen with it. It just makes it look a little bit more appealing. I'm just going to delete them. So we found that blur under the effects tab. Now there are actually loads of different effects that we can use. So another one that I like is AR stickers. So on the left hand side you've got all the categories. So you can use that or you can use the search effects. And let's just go to a point in the video where it's got my ugly mug. So these AR stickers do like, um, they're kind of like little filters that you get on the Instagram and things like that where it'll put dog ears and stuff like that on. But there's a, f there's a few on there that I find fairly amusing. It depends what kind of content you create. If you quite, create quite serious content, then these might be a little bit wasted. I quite like this bubble head one. So if I click on that bubble head and I'm going to drag it on top of the video, so that will add that effect to any clip that you drag it on top of. And if we just press play, you'll see how beautiful that's made me look. And I'll just remove that. But again, there are tons of different effects. Now you've got kind of comedy effects like that. Um, you've got audio effects. You've got utility effects, which are if you want to blur out certain parts of the video, or if you want to crop it or add a shape mask. And you've also got all these filters. So you've got filters, which you can add different effects, like for example, um, some shake. So let's add this sideways one, you'll see what I mean. I'll just press play. I mean, that makes my eyes hurt, but it looks like there's an earthquake or something. I'm just going to remove that effect again. And you've also got these overlays. Now, overlays are like different colours or light effects that you can add in. There's tons of different types. Again, 
Let's just choose one as an example. Let's use one of these light leaks. I'm just going to drag that one on. Now, do you see how that's added like a pink light effect onto it as well? Again, let's remove that. It's like I say, tons of different effects, tons of different filters that you can add in. Also at the top is an elements button. If we just click on the elements button. Now, I think of elements as like animated stickers that you can add to the screen. So again, on the left-hand side, you can see here in that what's new folder, there's nearly 2,000, so there's tons of these. A lot of them might not be any relevance to your content whatsoever, but you might find some good ones as well. So let's just use this social media one as an example. Now, let's say you're creating TikTok videos and you want to put a visual clue on there to get someone to, um, to follow you, to like, or to, to do whatever it is that will help you grow on that platform. So you can find one of these stickers or these elements, and you again, just drag it down. You see there, this is like a TikTok one. So we can drag it above our video so that it, so that it shows on top of the video. And then we can resize it, move it wherever we want to move it. We can put it up in the top corner if need be. And then if I just go to the point in the video before we've added that element, and I'll just press play, and you'll see, see how it appears as like a glitched animation. It's almost prompting them to hit the, the like button. But if you look at these here, these are just the social media ones. So there's lots of Instagram ones, some TikTok ones. Um, I know full well that there's a load of YouTube ones as well. I mean, that one, for example, if I double click on it, it'll show you the preview here. That's trying to prompt people to hit the bell notification as well and subscribe. But there's tons of different types of these elements. You've got emojis that you can add in. You've got virtual effects like fire and explosions and smoke. I'll just show you the fire one as an example. We'll just move that to the bottom of the screen. Again, it doesn't really work with a video that I've created, but it's just to kind of show you what I mean and to demonstrate a point. Well, basically, there are actually thousands of different elements in there that you can add in that could help your videos just look that little bit more polished. Now, lastly, one other thing that I like to do is add text on the screen. Now, this could just be to reinforce a point that you're making, or it could actually tell them to do something. You could even be adding captions just to kind of keep the video moving a little bit quicker and be more engaging. So if we click on titles at the top, this gives us loads of text options. Again, you've got different types. You've got titles, openers, subtitles, lower thirds. What I generally do is use a basic one. So if I just go to my favorites, there's one that's just called default title. Now, if I just click and drag that, and again, if you want to change the duration that this is actually on the screen, you can just click on the edge of it and make it smaller or bigger. Now, if I double click on that title, you'll see here, this is where we type in what we want to put in. So let's just type follow me. I'm just gonna drag that down to the bottom of the screen and we can use the arrows again to make it larger. You've got various options in here. You can change the font. So let's just change that to something else. I like this lucky guy one. It's a little bit of a cartoony effect, but I quite like it. You can change the size, you can change the color. If we click on advanced, you can actually add a border and a shadow to the text as well. So if we add a text border, and I don't want that bright pink, let's put black. I know it's quite a dark part of the screen anyway. Let's make that a bit bigger. I'll add a bit of blur as well. And then just press OK. Well, if I actually drag that up to a light part of the screen, you'll see, you'll see what we just added there. Now, we can also animate that text as well. So we've got to the left-hand side, we've got this animation. Now, these are different animation types that you can do for how it will be displayed. If you double-click on it, you can actually do a preview as well. So we've got various different effects that you can add. I'm just going to turn that off. And then you have another tab called Animation. This is how it appears on the screen. So if we double click on that slide right and then press play, you'll notice that it just comes in from the side and slides to the right. 
But there's loads of different animation types you can choose. You can have it kind of pop up on the screen, drop down, fade in, fade out. There's loads of different options too. Now, sometimes people want there to be kind of like an empty space at the bottom for them to put the captions in. Just because it looks a bit busy when you've got video in the background. It's really easy to do that. All we're going to do is go to the media folder and then we're going to go to sample colors. Now, I'm just going to use a, let's use this purple one. I'm going to use this purple background. Just like everything else, we click and we drag it. Now, I'm going to expand that so it's the same length as the video clip below of me talking. So we'll just drag it, and you'll see that green line appears as well. That shows that it's the same length. Now, obviously, that's no use. It's right in the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to click and drag it down to the bottom. Now, one thing you might think is, well, now you can't see the text. In the timeline editor, you'll notice we've got number one, number two, number three. Now, these are different layers or different tracks, if you like. The topmost layer is usually the most visible one. So if we take that title that we created before, that follow me text, and then we click and drag it above the purple block, you'll see it's now visible. So if you want to create your own captions and have a little bit of kind of um, empty space so that people can see the words more clearly, then all you would do is you would just keep repeating that text. So if you want, we can just copy it, move the timeline on a little bit, and paste it. Double click on the words and we can just type something else in. And you can just repeat that process and change the words all the way through as you go. And if we just press play, you'll see what I mean. And that's it. So that's how we add text, that's how we add images, how we add our video clips and transitions, how we cut them. And then once you're done and you're happy that that video looks exactly how you want it, you can just press this export button. Type the name of your video in and press export and it's ready to upload to whatever platform you choose to create content on. Now before you go anywhere, like I say, that was a very quick and brief run through. Now I've actually gone into great detail in this other video which is on screen now and the links are in the description too, which take you step by step and hold your hand and show you exactly how to get started with video editing in Filmora.